Living with only the necessities is known as minimalism. It entails having less materials, belongings, and being surrounded by them, allowing you to make better use of your time and life. Consider this, if you have fewer dishes to wash and dry, you'll save time. There's no reason to fight over the last Tupperware stack, none of which matches, by the way. And spending less time and money on stuff, and more time and energy on truly living, allows you to live a simple lifestyle. Now that we have a basic understanding of minimalism, let's dive into 15 simple steps to living a minimalist lifestyle. 15. One Last Shop Syndrome One of the things standing in your way now that you've decided to commit to minimalism and are ready to get started is the syndrome of the one last shop. The one last shop syndrome is similar to binge eating before beginning a new diet. You are nearly ready to dive into minimalism, but there are a few things you must first acquire. We're all guilty of this. Let's not even try lying. Our clothes are everything to us, for at least some of us. We keep telling ourselves that once we found the perfect house, or whatever it is, we'll be ready to start minimalism. And the thing is, the list could go on forever, but I'm sure you get the idea. The truth is, we'll never be ready to start, since there will always be a few more things that we need. I completely understand if you're having trouble with this, but here's what you need to know. Buying a little extra should never be the first step to live with less. I appreciate the desire to improve or replace a few things as part of minimalism, but don't start there. First, you must become used to possessing and requiring less. Also, keep in mind how perfectionism might undermine your minimalist goals. Most individuals use perfectionism as a means of postponing. So, stop looking for the ideal little t-shirt. It's preferable to focus your energy on being content with what you have. 14. Make a list of your minimalist rules with a pen and paper. Everyone's definition of minimalism differs. Some individuals define minimalism as having a limited quantity of possessions, like a capsule wardrobe. Others accomplish a minimalist lifestyle by decreasing their physical footprint in the world, opting for smaller living arrangements, such as a studio apartment or a modest house. And that's the beauty of minimalist living. You get to look at your life, your career, your family size, your lifestyle, your needs and desires from a different perspective. You get to figure out what minimalism means to you. Perhaps it's only a matter of decluttering your living space. It may be as simple as downsizing to a 200 square foot apartment. Perhaps you need to downsize your life totally. Whatever definition of minimalism you choose, be sure it's something you can live with. No need to cannonball into the minimalism pool. It's okay to dip a toe in first. 13. Clean the kitchen sink to get a fresh start. As much as we hate to admit it, we all have junk in our houses. The package in which your Amazon purchase arrived, your favorite sweater shrank after being washed, and we always say we'll fix things later, but we never do. In actuality, these goods take up unnecessary room, and minimalism is all about making the most of the space you have. So the first step is to start from scratch and throw out everything that isn't needed. 12. If you don't use it, you might as well throw it away. Shoes, notebook, sunglasses, and pencils are the bare minimum. Remember how we taught that minimalism entails adopting a less is more philosophy and only owning the things you require? Use it or lose it is a great way to put that to the test. During your initial cleaning, you can come up on some goods that you've used in the past but haven't used in a long time. Once upon a time items is what they're called. So use the six month use it or lose it rule when you find these products. If you haven't used it in the last six months, then it's time to do away with it. If it's a seasonal item, such as a winter coat or a swimsuit, consider whether you used it frequently the previous season. Eventually, work your way up to dumping goods you haven't used in three months, then items from the previous month. Also, only keep what you need right now, not what you imagine you'll need later. 11. Sort objects into groups based on their functions. Organize and simplifying your home is the next stage in your minimalist journey. Some people choose to categorize their belongings according to their geographical area. Everything in the living room is sorted first, followed by the kitchen, the bedroom, and so on. Consider all the places in your home where you could store a writing instrument. I found five in my living room, one in my kitchen, three in my bedroom, and one in a drawer in my bathroom after a fast investigation. I would still have 10 or more writing tools if I sorted each spot separately. The Mari approach can help you with this. It's one of the most popular cleaning, decluttering, and organizing techniques right now. And one of the golden laws is to sort stuff by category rather than by location. 
You can quickly get rid of duplicates if you do it this way. You'll be able to count your spoons, towels, blenders, sunglasses, shoes, and books. Then you'll be better equipped to decide what to keep and what to throw away. If, however, you're unsure of how many particular items you'll require, here are three general guidelines. Per bed, there are three sets of linens, two if you do laundry more often. Each person receives three towels. Each individual will receive three mugs. 10. Don't be afraid to ask yourself the tough questions. We can become overly attached to our precious belongings at times. Minimalism forces us to let go of such feelings and concentrate on the essentials. When you're trying to decide if something should stay or depart, ask yourself these three questions. Is it of any use? Is this the only one I've got? Is it a source of joy or affection for me? It can stay if you answer yes to any of the preceding questions. You wouldn't throw away your only blender if you used it once a week, and you don't have to throw away your grandmother's old photo albums. However, you may toss out the second blender you own, as well as the postcard from grandma that's great, but doesn't quite hit the mark. 9. Make sure they serve more than one purpose. It makes sense to have goods that serve several purposes if you're aiming to reduce your possessions. With kitchen items and appliances, this is especially simple, like a four-in-one grater or a single bottle opener for wine and beer. It could also be done with other products, such as these apartment-friendly furniture options. You can also get a duvet cover that you can use as a light blanket in the summer and then fill with a heavy duvet in the winter. 8. Make the most of the available space. Are you having trouble minimizing your belongings? Instead, reduce the amount of space they take up. Underneath a cabinet, hang your paper towel roll or cups. To make the most of your cabinet space, invest in wire shelving. Rather than storing all of your old photo albums, scan the images and save them on your computer. A slideshow of images will likely be more appreciated by your family than clustering around a single photo album. 7. Maximize the amount of space you have. Do you struggle to keep your possessions to a minimum? Reducing the amount of space they take up is a better option. Your paper towel roll or cups can be hung behind a cabinet. Invest in wire shelving to get the most out of your cabinet space. Instead of storing all your old photo albums, scan them and save the photographs on your computer. Your family will probably prefer a slideshow of photographs to a single photo book. 6. Remove the duplicates and throw them away. Fill a box with duplicates and walk through your house with it. Put two measuring cups in the box if you have two sets. Is it possible to have many copies of a book or a DVD? In the box, put one. Placemat sets with doubles? One is sufficient. When the box is full, label it duplicates and hide it for 30 days. Donate what you don't need or can't recall what was in the box. 5. Establish a clutter-free zone in your home. For example, this place in your kitchen could be a kitchen table, a nightstand, a countertop, or a drawer. Use the clutter-free zone as motivation to live more simply. If you like the feeling of being in a clean, clear atmosphere, try expanding the zone a little each day. A clutter-free countertop can lead to a clutter-free room, and a clutter-free room can lead to the clutter-free, minimalist house you've always wanted. 4. Take it easy when traveling. Pack for half the time the next time you go on a trip. Pack for two days if you're going on a four-day trip. You can wash and hang your clothes if necessary, or you can wear the same outfit twice. You might enjoy how great it feels to be lighter on your feet. 3. Wear fewer clothes. If you haven't heard of Project 333, dressed in only 33 items for three months, clothing, shoes, jewelry, and accessories may seem extreme, yet millions of people have discovered that it makes life easier rather than more difficult. 2. Consistency is key. When you consider how much time you spend thinking about what you'll eat for lunch, what you'll serve your family for dinner, or what you need to get at the grocery store, it's evident that eating isn't always simple. Try to have the same breakfast and lunch every day of the week, and rotate two or three evening options. If your family objects, explain that it's a test and that you'll discuss it at the end of the week. 1. Set aside $1,000 for savings. Everything is made easier when you have an emergency fund. Pay only the minimum payments on your debt until you've saved $1,000. Set away money every day or every week until you reach $1,000 if you're not in debt. If you take the 52-week money challenge, you'll save almost $1,000 in 45 weeks without ever donating more than $45 per week. Stress and disasters are reduced when you have money set aside for unexpected events. Is this to say that I'm not allowed to be emotional? Keep in mind that less does not equal none. Simple living has no set standards, and no one is obligated to let go of valuable possessions. The majority of minimalists keep some nostalgic artifacts in their lives, although they keep fewer than others. 
They proudly exhibit their sentimental possessions in their own house, rather than storing them in a storage facility or garage. Consider the following statistics for more reason to embrace minimalist living. Every year, the average adult in the United States discards almost 68 pounds of clothing, which is ridiculous, right? But we've barely started on these wild statistics. Working-age Americans claim they aren't saving anything for retirement, with 20 to 21% saying they aren't saving anything at all. Many people who save put aside less than 10% of their earnings. The New York Times found that there are 300,000 objects in the average American home. And according to Forbes, in America, the average household spends $1,700 per year on clothing. So do you still think minimalism is not the future? Let me know your thoughts. Well folks, I hope you enjoyed and found value in the video. If you enjoyed it, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you're new, welcome and subscribe for more content like this. With that said, have a great day you guys and I'll see you all in the next one.